In clinical practice, multiple factors determine our choice of therapy. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists recommends that we should start therapy with dual therapy or dual drugs, that is two drugs, if the HbA1c at presentation is more than 7.5%. In an Indian OPD, almost all our patients have an entry HbA1c of more than 7.5. So it makes sense, therefore, for us to start therapy with two drugs instead of with metformin monotherapy. If we decide that we wish to start therapy with two drugs, we have to choose drugs which are not only efficacious in controlling A1C, but which are also safe, well tolerated and which have a synergistic effect with each other. We have seen the evidence that linagliptin and metformin can control HbA1c in a very safe manner without causing hypoglycemia, without causing any other side effects. One advantage I would like to highlight here is that linagliptin is able to increase the sensitivity of the alpha cell. Not only does it reduce glucagon levels, it also increases the sensitivity of the alpha cell so that in a situation where hypoglycemia occurs, glucagon release is encouraged. What this means for us in practice is that we can use linagliptin plus metformin combination along with insulin as well and we can assume that there will be lesser hypoglycemia if we add linagliptin to an insulin-based regime. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists suggests dual or triple combination therapy because it is understood that with any monotherapy, whether metformin or any other drug, you cannot bring HB1C down more than 1%. Because of this, we tend to use linagliptin and metformin FDCs in practice. But it's not efficiency alone which helps us decide what therapy to give and what not to give. We also worry about safety and tolerability. With a linagliptin-based combination, you actually do not have to worry about these things because there are hardly any contraindications. In any situation where insulin is not mandatory, linagliptin can be used. Metformin also, in the past few months, has seen its list of indications expanding and its list of contraindications contracting. So now we use it much more freely in patients with mild or moderate renal impairment. Of course, we do keep a watch on GFR and on creatinine levels, but in general, we are much more confident using it in clinical situations where earlier insulin was the only drug of choice. So in a busy practice like you and I have, we do not have to think much about whether to prescribe or not to prescribe linagliptin plus metformin combination because there are hardly any contraindications to this. Another issue which we consider in clinical practice is that of tolerability. So if you have an effective drug which causes a lot of side effects and then you have the patient coming back to you complaining, demanding troubleshooting, then this drug is not going to be welcome in practice in our clinics. With linagliptin plus metformin, there is no issue for tolerability. It is tolerated as well as a placebo is. And therefore again, it makes, it sen it makes sense for us to use it freely in a busy clinical practice. The major advantage of this combination in my practice, however, is that of patient acceptance. Patient acceptance is determined by efficacy, obviously, also by tolerability, and also by ease of use. So for example, if I have a drug which I have to give exactly 30 minutes before a meal with a huge big glass of water at the same time every day, what this causes is something known as intrusion and we term it the index of intrusion of a particular drug or a particular therapy. Trajenta Duo hardly intrudes into anybody's life. You can give it before meals, with meals or after meals. Ideally, it should be used twice a day, but it is not mandatory to give it at 12 hourly intervals. Because let's look at the pharmacokinetics. For linagliptin, you might want to give a 5 milligram dose once daily or 2.5 milligram dose twice daily. It is not mandatory to give the 2.5 milligram dose twice daily at 12 hourly intervals. So therefore, you can give it, for example, with breakfast and lunch or with lunch and dinner, if these are the two main meals of the day. For metformin, 
as long as you have maintained a five to six hour gap, the drug can be given uh, in two succeeding meals. So you can give it at any two uh, consecutive meals provided those are the two main meals or heavy meals of the day. It is this advantage in timing of administration, in change in timing of administration, lack of side effects, uh, very good efficacy which makes it a preferred drug for use both for the physician and for the patient. One of the main challenges that I face in clinical practice is that of troubleshooting. So let us say I have prescribed a sulfonylurea or any other drug which causes side effects. The side effect may be weight gain, it may be hypoglycemia, it may be gastrointestinal side effects. If the patient keeps on coming back to me repeatedly with these complaints, asking for troubleshooting, it tends to reduce my efficiency. It reduces the efficiency of my clinic and the final negative impact is on patients because then we are not able to serve as many people as we would like to. With linagliptin plus metformin in combination, we have none of these problems. It is easy to prescribe, it is easy for the patient to take, it gives good results and because of that we tend to use it more and more often in our practice. It's been nice interacting with you today and I look forward to such interactions in the future as well. Please feel free to give your comments, suggestions and ask any queries so that we can help improve the quality of the CMEs that we deliver in this format to you.